Why you look so down, Jimmy? Oh, Carl, sometimes being a man of calculus is a heavy burden. I know what you mean, Jimmy. That's why I decided early on to sabotage my highly mathematic brain with cartoons and sugar. Well, I think it's too late for me. If only I could have one day where I'm not an amazingly smart genius that I am. Well, today's your lucky day because I have an amazing calculus project I'm about to show the class. I drew the unit circle. Uh, Carl, that's a triangle. It's yes, not. <laughs> okay, guys, I solved the Riemann hypothesis. <sighs> Jimmy does it again. Why do you even bother? Wait, I don't give up. My project is just as good as neutrons. Look, Sandy, Jimmy just solved the Riemann hypothesis. Ugh, why don't you just go to MIT, become a famous mathematician, and leave us all alone? Good news, everyone. Jimmy scores are on the Palm Beach Atlantic pre-cal exam were the highest in world history. Okay, class is over. No one touched Jimmy's head. It's precious cargo. 20 minutes later. I liked your project, Libby. Save it, Neutrons. Don't be the third derivative of a position. What's the point of being smart if it only makes me miserable? Two thousand years later. Die out, Lord. Gentlemen, I present you with the calculus drain ten thousand. But, but Jimmy, maybe you don't want to drain your brain. But I do, Carl. I do. For one day, I just want to be an average, good-for-nothing, normal citizen. Like you guys. But, but what if you don't like it? Well, that's okay. All I have to do is plug the antiderivative of the function I'm using right now into the programming and put the helmet back on. Yeah, Carl. All he has to do is reverse the fumble uh, to the anti into the... Uh, yeah, just turn it on. Not yet. My current IQ is 210. To become an average citizen, my IQ needs to go all the way down to 100. I used a related rates problem to calculate my how fast my invention drains knowledge, which happens to be a rate of 10 IQ points per second. So I need to wear this helmet for exactly 11 seconds. You got that? I need you to turn it off after those 11 seconds, otherwise I'm going to be retarded. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, here goes. One eternity later. Wait, how long did he say he wanted that helmet on for? Uh... Sheen! Look at him. He looks totally the same. Yeah, he looks normally stupid. Shiny. Shiny. I like the shiny. Uh, uh. Can we keep him? Yeah. Six and a half hours later. What do you think this is, Jimmy? Oh, shiny. Okay. Well, what do you think this is? Oh, man. Tomorrow. All right, class. Who can tell me what is sine of 2 theta? Ooh, I got it. Four. <gasps> Jimmy, Craig got done into some of the most important things in the Pre-Cal, it is imperative that you have these down before you even get to this class. What's the matter, Neurotron? I thought this was easy for you. It's zero. Finally, this shows for one brief and shining moment that I am smarter than Neutroid over here. That means I, Cindy Vortex, assume my rightful place as the smartest person in calculus. A few moments later... Something's not right with Neutron. Says who? I beat him on a quiz for the first time ever today. If something's wrong with him, then there's something right with us, finally. 
Yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, I'm finally the smartest person in class again. What could possibly be bad about this? Cindy, I can't believe I'm going to have to ask you this, but I'm going to need you to tutor Jim. His performance has really plummeted, and I'm just going to need you to, um, help bring him back. You want me to help Nerdtron? The guy I spent the last three years trying to take down? Why do I do that? Because if you don't, I'll fail you. Have a nice day, Miss Vortex. 3.28 a.m. So why don't you understand? Apparently everything. Um, I guess we'll just start with a basic integral. An integral is the area underneath a curve between two specific bounds. You know, just in case you're too stupid to remember that. Um, so this means the area from 0 to 1 of the function 5x to the 4th plus 2 in respect to x. So how you do that is you take the antiderivative by increasing the degree and then dividing by the new degree. So you get x to the 5th plus 2x and then reflect the bounds from the first side. Plug them into the antiderivative. 1 to the 5th plus 2 times 1 minus the second term plugged in. 0 to the 5th plus 2 times 0. And that leaves you with 1 to the 5th is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, so the answer is 3. Got it? 12 seconds later. Alright, King Cranium, what's going on with you? One day you're practically an astrophysicist, and the next you have the fine motor skills of a 5-year-old, so what's going on? Are you even listening to me? What? Calculus 3 and 10,000? <laughs> of course. Another one of your stupid inventions gone wrong. Come on, King Cranny, I'm trying to refill that massive head of yours. Mm. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting, and they had to hire a new one. Guys, I can figure this out. Just shut up and give me some time, okay? What was Jimmy saying? He had to figure out the anti... the... the reachable conjunction. Antiderivative of the, of the function? Did he say the antiderivative of the function? Uh, yeah, that was it. Then what equation do we use? Uh, I think that one. Oh, right. Yeah, I knew that. Uh, Libby, do you just want to do the quick antiderivative? Sure, sure. What? What's the antiderivative? The antiderivative is the rate of change at any given moment. So the antiderivative is the original function. exam is in two days. What are we doing? We should be studying. Ugh. Great. Frankenhead walks the earth again. Sometimes it's just such a heavy burden being a man of calculus. I know what you mean, Jimmy. Uh, that's why I decided early on to uh, sabotage my highly <laughs> mathematical mind <laughs> uh, with... Oh, it's not the one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Okay. okay, you can go now. Is it going? Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Damn, you're right now. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Paul.